welcome to technology for noob in this video i am going to cover how we can create real time graphs in django applications so a small demo of what at the end of the tutorial what we will have so as you can see in my screen so there are some pop ups and then my graphs are changing over the period of time and it's a kind of a real time and it's not only just a ajax call going to the back end but actually it's it's real time using web sockets so let's cover or let's start the tutorial so far in my previous videos if you would have seen most of the applications were based on a rest calls meaning there used to be some request from the user or from the browser and the system used to serve that or figure out what that request is about then it will respond to it and then finally the connections gets closed that's how the normal http works and django works on the http only now the point comes how to prepare or how to create a real time application in the same django and from now onwards whenever i say real time application it means where the data communication is flowing or happening throughout seamlessly between the final end consumer or the client let's say the browser and from the data from where the or the source from where the data is getting generated so what kind of solutions come under the real time application category so like chatbots i mean the very casual or the very most commonly given example real time applications and then comes the real time dashboards and also maybe live tracking of any real iot device so this kind of solutions can be built with the thing which i will be sharing in this tutorial so how does this kind of system works can this be done in the http protocol so for real time application the system does not use the http protocol instead it uses web sockets iot protocols or custom defined scopes what this all means is when a connection gets connected it does not get closed after the response it keeps the tunnel open until the user or client does not close the connection so and to understand this in a different way so far in the http protocol the client was initiating the connection and server was responding to it and as mentioned earlier once acknowledged the connections get closed but in real time scenario if there is a new data point coming through the sensor or there is a new data generation then it has to reach the system or say the back end and then reach to the ui without it being initiated from the ui or the client side meaning the server can also send the new data without any new request to the client or the ui for this purpose we use web sockets So web sockets provide the functionality by which the request or data can be pulled from the client side and can be pushed from the server as well. It establishes the tunnel between the server and the client or many clients. As soon as the clients connect with the system, this kind of connection establishment is called subscribing and then the server publishes the new data to the subscribed clients and keep the data flowing in the tunnel without disconnecting it or the ui disconnecting it the clients can also push and pull and the server can also do the same also most of the things are async rather than synchronous which is the default behavior of django projects so a small description of the web socket so web socket is a network protocol that provides bidirectional communication between a browser and a web server the protocol was standardized in 2011 and all modern browser provides built in support for it So now when we know what is needed for creating a real time application in django now how to do it or how to proceed with it and as we know django does not have a default support for such kind of application we have to use a third party library and that's called django channels which extends the django's ability beyond http to handle web sockets chat protocols it's built on python specification asgi now we have to understand what is asgi so asgi stands for asynchronous server gateway interface and before even understanding the asgi we have to understand what is wsgi because the wsgi is the default behavior of django or is the default which django use for 
making it as a server. So the normal Python works in WSGI. WSGI is a web server gateway interface. It is a specification des that describes how a web server communicates with web applications and how web applications can be chained together to process one request. It's kind of a standard like PEP. So if an application or framework or toolkit is written to the WSGI spec or specification, then it will run on any server written to that spec. A WSGI server only receives the request from the client, passes it to the application and then sends the response return to the application to the client. It does nothing else. All the details must be supplied by the application or middleware. Now, in the other hand, ASGI is a, a successor to WSGI intended to provide a standard interface between async capable Python web servers, frameworks and application. So in, in simple words, it just extends Django from not only supporting HTTP, but also supporting web sockets or any other different protocols. So in simple words, WSGI provide for standard synchronous Python apps. ASGI pro provides one for both asynchronous and the synchronous apps with WSGI backward compatibility. The WSGI applications are a single synchronous callable that takes a request and returns a response. And our ASGI would support us on allowing long lived connections like you get with the long pole HTTP or WebSocket connect. Django channels are the nice extension for the Django projects, which adds the functionality of asynchronous code underneath and through Django synchronous code, allowing Django project to handle not only HTTP, but protocols that require long running connections too, like WebSockets, MQTT, chatbots, radio channels, and more. It also provides integration with Django's authentication system, session system, and more, making it easier than ever to extend your HTTP only project to other protocols and just take your applications or the Django applications to the next level. So for any real time application, we need some method which allows to connect poll data and then close connection when needed. This kind of function fall under the hood of consumers. So what is a consumer? So a consumer is a basic unit of channels. We call it a consumer as it consumes events, but you can think of it as its own little application. When a request or new socket comes in, channels will follow its routine table. We will be exploring it little more, but for now, just up to this point and let's move ahead. When a new request or new socket comes in, channel will look for the routing table and then find the right consumer for that incoming connection and start up a copy of it as it's asynchronous. This means that Unlike Django views, consumers are long running and they can also be a short running. HTTP request can also be served by consumers, but they are built around the idea for living for a little while and closed when there is no polling or no new data coming into the. So channels gives us the tools to write this basic consumers or individual pieces that might be required for creating any real time application and tie them together with URL routing, protocol detection and other handy things to make it a full real time application. So we treat HTTP with the help of Django channels. The traditional Django views are still usable and can be wrapped in an ASGI application called channels.http.asgi handler and the URL routing middleware, they all are just part of ASGI application. What I mean is we can still have the synchronous techniques like Django views for most of the code, but have the option to drop down to more direct asynchronous interface for complex tasks. Uh, we must be familiar with some terminologies before jumping into the real time application development. The channels and ASGI split up incoming connections into two components, a scope and a series of events. So any new data which gets produced in the device or as the edge device, it's called event. So an event has been raised. Now the system has to perform whenever that event get raised. So the scope is a set of details about a single incoming connection, such as the path a web request was made from or the originating IP address of a web socket or the user messaging a chatbot. And this scope should be persistent 
throughout the connection and this is what the starting point of any web socket or any polling of the data starts with so for http the scope just lasts a single request so when we are in http as i scope gets initiated even in the http call it gets initiated it gets answered and then connection gets closed for web socket it lasts for the lifetime of the socket but changes if the socket closes or reconnects for other protocols it varies based on how the protocol asgi specification is written so during the lifetime of this scope or any scope a series of events will occur this represents users interaction making a http request for example or sending a web socket frame your channels or asgi application will be initiated once per scope and then it will be fed as a stream of events happening within that scope to decide what to do with it just to summarize when a http protocol happens a request comes the http type scope gets created which has header method request path body content and so on then the application will will find the correct response for it it will send it back to the client or the browser and connection will get closed similarly when there would be a asgi web socket connection start the user sends a first message to the system let's say through the web socket protocol it will open a scope containing all the information username password authentication everything and then the application will go on and say or the server would say message received and a event would be raised and it will not respond but could send meaning to say it will not respond back to the web socket or the source generator it will send to whoever is listening to it or or whoever has subscribed to that particular channel and it will just pass that message to those subscribers when the user sends more messages the system will just pass more events to the subscribers and then after a while when there would be a time out or there would be some condition of if system does not listen anything for let's say 10 minutes then it will close the connection or maybe a restart of the scope so so far this is what i think we should be aware as a theory before jumping into the implementation this was enough for a theory part and if you need more information uh, there is a django channels page in the readme docs you would be able to get more information about the django channels but now let's jump into the actual implementation of real time dashboard or let's say graph in django so before jumping to our actual implementation let's have a look at the architecture how the architecture looks like of what we are going to implement so this raspberry pi third party tool is nothing but a notebook for us for now and what it would do is it would mimic like a edge and it will send data through web sockets to our actual django application on an, in the django application side we will have a backend logic or the business logic what needs to be done and and this particular part would send all the data whatever will be received through any edge device or our notebook for instance and it will send it to the many subscribers of that particular channel or let's say that's that data and this will happen using redis channel so redis is another third party tool which we use and all this communication will happen through web sockets and then there would be a dashboard ui where i would be updating the chart or graph on real time as soon as the event would happen or a new data would get generated in the or through the notebook it as soon as it will received by the server it will publish it to all the subscribers and in this part it would be published to the ui the chart will get update without refreshing the browser from the ui side so this is how our entire application would be i have already list down the steps needed to create the real time django application so we will be following this steps and finally we will end up with the real time application so the steps starts with creating a project add template add app settings this all are basic and then i will add a simple graph i will use the chart js library for this particular purpose then i will add add some view and i will set the url and then i will just run the app and see the graph so this would i am just going to do it because it's very common so you can just follow me 
by looking at the video or you can use the base code and then from and once the basic requirements are set for the application we will start with the Django channels implementation. At this point, we have our default application in place. Now from here onwards, our actual journey will start for making it real time. Where I have a data, now I just want to make it real time. So let's just get started. The next step is to add channels. I will come to my settings page. In here, you have to add the channels at the top. The moment we have written channels in our installed apps, something is going to change. As you can see now, I got the error in my console. What it says is, you have not set AAGI application which is needed to run the server. So I will just do it again and as you can see, it will again throw the same error. And, and there is a, another reason why we have to have channels at the top of our installed apps. The reason is, the channels development server will conflict with any other third party apps that require an overload or replacement of the run server command. So better you, you describe the channels at the top and the rest would be taken care by the ASGI configuration. So here when I have the same routing for WSGI, now we need it for ASGI. So I will just simply say ASGI and I have to add a routing page in my application. So in Django RT, you have to add routing.py and in routing.py, we have to bring some classes from the channels.routing and this would be used as our application is equal to and a empty dictionary for now. And here I have to just simply say routing and I have already defined my application here. So we are kind of good for now. Let's just save it and let's try again. Now if I see there is a change here which says starting in my console starting ASGI channel version 2.4 meaning what now the channels our installed app has taken control of the run server command and replace the standard Django development server with the channels development server. So this is the first step of our creating the real time application in Django. Let's see what's the next step after that. So we have already done it. We have added the routing.py which is perfect. Now define the WebSocket URL. Now the point is to add WebSocket URL. And by standard, we always used to save our URLs in our urls.py. 
but right now we are we can still define the websocket url here but just to keep things self explanatory and maybe easy to replicate we might or we should follow a little different way of defining the websocket urls so right now our common urls start with like url path we have defined and and it's done and i can still use the websocket url with the same practice but it would be good if i add a prefix ws before the websocket url so that if some other person reads about it he should be able to understand okay ws prefix is there it means it's a websocket url to define the websocket url or the pattern i would just simply use the standard feature of django which we use from django dot urls import path so right now we don't have make a complicated one where we have we are we are creating a dynamic thing because we are our objective is very much clear to populate a dashboard or send the data to the some subscribers so what exactly is required is we have to just simply say web socket url pattern and i have to put it in a list call path and as i said a prefix of ws and any name of your choice so right now i can say poll data and this is my url which the websocket users or the publisher or the edge device has to send to me using this particular data now this particular url pattern has to be passed to asgi specification and our channel should be able to detect it identify it and should be able to process it and send to the actual class or function wherever we want to send it so similarly we used to use our urls which used to send a uh, determine the path and then finally call that particular appropriate function or class in here also i have to do the same task and that would be inside this protocol type router so before that i have to finish my this path because after identifying the path it has to send it to a particular class or function right so what class or function it would here it would be we would give here and that is consumers so before sending it to any consumer we have to define a consumer so for that particular purpose where the consumer would be defined our consumer would be defined anywhere but for now we would be defining it in our application that is the first page so i will just create a new file in my first page and i will name it consumer you can name it any name but it just for the sake of understand for the other person to understand your code defining it in a standard format is always a good practice so what i will do from first page i have not defined anything there but it is fine for now i will call consumer and in here i would just simply say call consumer and some class name which i will define it there so i would say dash consumer this is good enough now now once i have defined my url patterns this url pattern should be subscribed or should be sent to the channels or our django channels so that would be happening through this particular part so i will define my application which is configured in here asj django rt dot routing dot application so in this application it would try to read it for this particular part django channels has provided the url router as i mentioned during the channels part or the description of the channel so in the same part here i would have my url router from this particular class channels dot routing and also for the authentication purpose we will import channels dot auth import auth middleware stack this is all we needed i will bring it here now when i have defined this protocol type router by default it has already understood all the http things which are defined in the url patterns so i do not have to define or pull the url patterns here i have to actually define the web sockets which i want to add to my asgi part so in here i will call my auth middleware stack and then i will call url router and inside it i will pass my websocket url patterns websocket yes so this is all this file we have a incomplete work and that's 
we have to define our consumer and a class dash consumer so i will go to consumer i have to inherit or i have to import a particular channels dot generic dot websocket module and in here i have to import async websocket consumer so just to remind our entire application has to be async right that's the whole objective of having the django channels so all the classes which we used to write has to be now in async format so i will just define a class and my class name should be dash consumer and this particular class will inherit the properties of async websocket consumer so all the definition within this, this function should be in async so how to write a async functions it's very simple you have to just simply say async keyword before your function name and you have to just simply say the definition name but there is one more catch we have to only give the function names as mentioned here connect disconnect and receive so my first function name disconnect self and what to do with it don't know so let's simply say await and self dot connect so that's all whenever there would be any channel which will be initiated or any scope which will be initiated from any of the data generator or any device which have which is subscribed to this particular server and will be sending the data the first step would be always get connected with the server and here the channel will get subscribed or added into the consumer once we have defined our connect we can just simply go ahead with async def disconnect and in here it takes two elements and it's like status code and that's called close underscore code and what has to be done here uh, nothing await self dot disconnect and we are good so these are the two operations now the third operation i got connect i have got disconnect now once the connection established i have to consume all the data which would be sent through the device to my server and that would be called as receive and in receive i have to say self and some element let's say text data and i have to i will be doing something with it so now what to do so let's let's understand what could be done and what could be achieved i would just add pass and i would also say let's say print whatever data we have received and let's leave it as it is here so now up to this point we have got our consumer and we have got our routing configuration and we have got our settings all in place so the only new thing which we have done so far is routing and the consumer.py and now i am going to do something interesting so here okay i have to say and then let's see whether it is running correctly okay so it is running now now how to confirm whether my things are ready or not so i will create uh let's say a sample a small script which will start sending data to our server and how it's going to work let's see so i have created a sample notebook file i am going to use a module called websocket which helps us on communicating using python to websockets so as you can see here my url host ws localhost 8000 instead of http and ws whole data is what we have added so instead of http websocket so this is the first difference and i have given ws as my url pattern which differentiates that poll data is through web sockets not the http so i am just doing this particular part so in ws.connect it will establish so let's see and i would say you here in this particular console when i will execute this particular cell so i executed it and as you can see what it says web socket hand shaking and then finally something happened and maximum recursion that exceeded and it closed right so i really wanted to see it the the reason it's really important this is where the concept of scope and groups can be understood in the consumers point of view what exactly happened when i executed this particular piece of code so i said okay connect to this particular url system even reach to this url right and it just simply said url connect 
but we have missed a very important concept here. Something should come, but it should be subscribed to a particular channel. A channel is a mandatory thing so that the routings or the data could be associated to a particular publisher and a subscriber. So whoever has subscribed should not be getting any other data from apart from the channel which it has subscribed. Whenever any connection get initiated from any device or browser, as described earlier, we always have a scope associated with it. So now what I can do is I can check what my scope has and what are the attributes my scope contains or is associated with. So let's see it in action. So I have my console here and I will just simply rerun this one again. And as you can see, I got all the informations or the raw information which comes as a header or information with the particular scope or a request. So this is what the first head or the information comes from the connection establishment. Like even username, password, authentication, everything happens and whatever extra arguments which we want to pass like with the parameter or attribute we associate with the URL with the which the URL router has to decipher or has to detect every information would come in this particular part so you can see so first we will have a scope and then we will have a URL route and then args and whatever you want to take out from the URL for your action but now here we are not considered about cons concerned about any of those stuff. We just wanted to understand the scope. Now, once we have the scope, any WebSocket consumer channel will automatically get added when the connection happened and it would be our job to associate them with some groups to come to the main point here. So we have a, this channel layer. And this channel layer is kind of a mailbox kind of example where you should have a address for that mailbox and then you can send or receive the message from that mailbox. And now this group which I just said is kind of a related is a group of a related channels. A group can has a name and anyone who has the name of a group can add remove a channel to the group by name and send a message to all channels in the group. It is not possible to enumerate what channels are in a particular group also. So right now we will start with adding a group to our particular channel. So right now we would be creating our group when a connection will get established and the same group would be would be associated to any number of subscriber which would want to get associated with that particular channel. So what I'm going to do is await. So when whenever there is a connection happen. I will associate all my connect channels to a particular group name. So I will define it globally here for within my class. So self dot let's say any value group name is equal to dashboard simple. So whenever connect would happen, I would just simply say await self dot channel layer dot group underscore add and I will pass self dot group name which I just created above. So the channel layer would have the function group add whenever there is a connection establishment and in the group name it will take the group name and second thing it will take is the channel name which will get associate associated from the system itself okay so this is what our system look like at present whenever there would be a connection get established let's save it and now check our application again self is not defined okay i will just replace it here and we are good and i will just connect has no attribute group add so channel layer dot group add and this is really interesting. So in our to do list, I forgot to do this particular part. So define Redis channel and start the Redis server. Redis server, you have you can just simply install it uh, from their binaries and uh, I have already did it. And then you have to start it Redis server.exe 
this will launch and this will create the so now we have to define the redis in our settings i just simply get it here and this is what we have so let's say even if you want to not use redis right now so what you can do is instead just comment all this and you can use the default channel layer provided by the django channels and the way to define it is simple you have to just instead of reddish connection information you have to just simply say backend channels dot layers dot in memory channel layer so right now i have already launched the reddish so i will be using the reddish for this particular purpose so now let's see if this solves our problem i will come here and i will just start connection handshake happened but again i see the same issue but i do not see the group layer issue anymore so i think we are kind of good now with the previous issue but now we have to solve the same is still going into the recursion problem so to solve it okay so i found the error i actually have to use a sept and here also we will come to this point later okay i will just simply say pass so now let's check our connection again and i will try to connect again and connected so we are successful on connecting to our consumer and this is how the server starts now the next point is i want to send data right so now i will just run the same logic here and i will start sending the data and now you can see i am already receiving the print which i added there so the web socket module which i am using in my notebook is just simply doing dot send and the dumps so in a json format and i am just sending a random value and the value is associated to a key value and if i can see here i have a print and i am just sending the text data right so this is the last part of our consumer and this is really very easy but a few things has to be taken care here so once we got the data now this particular data has to be sent to whatever system or the subscribers available for this particular channel right or the group so how to see it without coming going up to the um, ui so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to run a command prompt and the web socket module which i just said earlier also provides one more functionality which allows us to listen to any subscribed channel using the same module so to the code for that particular part is, so i am going to prepare a subscriber here who has subscribed for this particular data and it would receive whatever data comes to the server from any device or or any publisher right so this is my device which is sending the data to my server and this server would send it back to the whoever has subscribed for that particular data and that's how the real system or real time data would happen right so this is my system which i'm just seeing the server and i will just activate my environment the command is python m web sockets and your path so my ws is the web socket path and this is all and i say it now it has subscribed to it but right now our server is not actually sending any data right now so now we have to write the function which will send the data to whatever subscribers it has been associated with so the portion where you would write whatever logic or the backend logic has to be performed after receiving the data would be always in the receive function right so what i'm going to do is we have got the data in the text data and it's in a json dump format so i have to reload back into a json loads to process the data now i can extract the value directly and i already know what data i am sending that is the that is in the key value so value would be my data point and so i have got my absolute value with me and that is an integer now here i would just simply say await self dot again channel layer now in the channel layer i have already added the group now i will say send to that group so there is a function called group 
underscore send so in the send again we can pass two values the first is again i have to define which group so we have already defined the group name and then the value which we want to send to that particular group and this value should be in a dictionary format the first one talks about the type so when we say type it actually means a function or any kind of pre-processing so it would have a, a type which would have any kind of business logic you want to define and that could be defined in a separate function and that function name should be passed here so i would say type and my function name d pre-processing that's the name i am giving and whatever value you want to pass with that particular function so this is how we describe it in our receive function now once i have defined it we we actually do not need this now anymore we have to define our d processing function and that again should be async async def our pre-processing function and now self and what we are expecting with it so any event so this is a reserved keyword which we have to use here so a event happened the data came we we got the data we associated with a group name that is the which the subscribers have been subscribed with and then type the function name and the value which we will pass with it i will come here some other value variable name and i will call my event which i am passing here and i will get the value which i passed so this is the value which i passed right now return so self dot send and in the send we have to again say our text data and with the text data what we want to pass so json dot dumps as we are sending the json data again and this dump would have the our actual value value and here our value is well other we are good now let's check our application now so this is my publisher let's say now at this point let's check our system so this is my notebook not needed this is our server which we need and then we have our i would say the subscriber which is just polling the data right so let's make it connected so now it is listening and it says it's connected and now simply here uh, we will we have already started the server and now let's start sending the data so our system got connected and then there is error for sure so what it's saying is the values and i know it's my mistake extremely sorry for the typo i guess so i have a value and here it is only values so once i have refreshed it let's see our server again and our subscriber again so server is ready i will just subscribe again so this will start polling i will connect back and i'll start sending the data so system got connected value started coming and here i started receiving so we have crossed our first and we have actually completed the tutorial you know this is how the system works now we are receiving the data through some subscriber we are sending the data through some event generator or let's say it can be any device it can be any edge device it can be any raspberry pi or any sensor blah 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 but now the main point is we have created a server which receives the data and we have created a web socket enabled django application and everything is in async so far so let's see what we have as a next step so we have got up to here show the communication add group in the channel we understood what group is also now demo of the web socket we already saw the web socket demo now the major part is to create the ui which shows the graph in a real time for that a little bit of javascript is needed even i don't know much but i somehow got learned it and it's fairly simple so let's go ahead and start writing our so now we have to implement the same websocket concept in javascript as well and it is fairly simple it, it is even simpler than the django channels for sure so we have to just restructure our code of char to make it ready for the websocket communication so right now we have this script we have we are using this my chart 
then we have the data information which is kind of a uh, variable for our case it it is not going to be constant right for sure and everything has to be passed through here so what i'm going to do is this portion i'm going to move it out and define a new variable and that variable name could be anything data object let's say and i just paste everything here so now i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 as my labels i have my data set which has to go here so this is the exact thing which we want to keep on change over the period of time now this data object i will pass it here and our graph is ready so there is one more thing which we have to do instead of using this where my chart we actually have to use a little different way of defining the chart here so that javascript would not ask me to update the ui with the reload button but the web sockets event would make it refresh on its own and to do that we have to just remove this piece and say window dot my line and we are good so now i have created this variable and the only thing which we have to do when any new data comes or any new event happens i have to just simply say window dot my line dot update with the new data object so now we have to just learn how to write web sockets in javascript for our particular purpose so before that let's see how our ui looks like at the current scenario where we have our django running having everything in place so let's see so our graph is running so we are good here now let's just simply so i have script so in here i will define my another script which would actually update or which will have the logic of web sockets in javascript to begin with we have to first create a new variable or object which let's say socket for now and i am giving the absolute path but you can manipulate your path based on your input parameters from the ui as well so right now i have just given it here as it is now in the web socket the socket object will have on connect on message and on close attributes so i will start with socket dot on open so a function i will be defining then an event would happen so we will consume an event and let's just simply start with alert and simply say connection established and once this event happens we are good with the open option of the socket now with the socket dot on message so now this is similar to receive in our django consumer so here i would say function i will accept that event with this event i will say something let's say console dot log and this e dot data would have the values of whatever value i will receive similarly let's just stay up to this point and then we need socket dot on close function receive the event and say alert connection closed and let's just simply see how our ui behaves now so my data is getting written so it's fine so i will just open the inspect for the and let's observe the console and i will reload now established for sure okay and socket spelling mistake again socket socket and we reload established and now i can see the values are getting written here so now we have to just learn how to process it and send it to the ui i have a very simple idea for that what i am going to do is i will leave the labels as it is i don't worry about the labels but what i want mainly to change is my data what i'm going to do is i will receive the data i will remove the first element of my array and i will add the new data into the end of the array so the first thing would be to pop the first element and then push the new element into the same array 
but actually pop happens on the last element so we are going to use the shift of javascript so that's the whole objective here so i'm going to write that logic in here what i'm going to do is and all the elements write i mean all the elements reside inside the data object and this data object has data key and then it has data set key and then it has data key so this is all, all i have to be worried about so what i'm going to do is or if you want to see the things in action here so i have data object data object and this is what the data object looks like i have my data object then i have data so within data i have data sets and this is how the data sets looks like in this data set i have label and data so i'll be here data sets the first element from the first element i know what i have to get data and this gives me the entire array and just to see shift and i pass it now it has it has removed the 12 that is my first element that's all i have to do in my javascript code in the here so what i'm going to do is simple i will parse the data which i have received receive data and json dot parse I will just simply say e dot data. Then I will create a new data object, and I will bring the previous data object. In the data object, I have data sets. So just to be sure, data object, I have data. So data object, I have data. Then data has data sets. and the data sets has data and data belongs to the first element so now this gives me my data i will just simply data object dot shift as i show in the console once the data is removed i have to add the last value that is data object dot push data object new dot push and it will take the value of received data and the value is the where the value exist the actual value and once i have this executed i will reassign all this thing back to so i will reassign all the values back data object new and once i have all the information what i want to do is i want to update this particular part on every event and this and server logic for updating the data using the web web sockets now let's explore what exactly happens um i will just restart few stuffs i will just close it i will close the system i will restart it now i will associate it back i have to start my server again i started the server again and this is fine now just let's restart connection established and our data starts getting updated and it is also coming to my subscriber which i created and the only place where from where the data is getting written is it at this particular part so as you can see we have implemented everything around the django the real time data one publisher two subscribers one the ui and the one which i am running in the console similarly you can have many the only thing which i have left at the end is to define my disconnect so in the disconnect part what i have to do is all the things are still the same i would just simply say await self dot channel layer and then i have to remove the group and that's called using discard group discard and again it takes two arguments self dot group name and then self dot channel channel name and we are good with this as well now let's save it i remove it connection got closed perfect server got restarted i will get this system running again i will subscribe here again 
and then I will have to subscribe to my so the I will just refresh connection established data started getting uploaded server is running and subscriber is also receiving the data so I believe this is all for this particular video so so we are not done yet but we have learned the basics how to get started with the Django channels create a real-time dashboard which actually has some real-time impl implication as well we can we can go to the next level now now I have a next task for whoever is listening to this video come up with your own use case maybe run it in some Raspberry Pi maybe run through your mobile maybe something create some data through some real activity publish it in your dashboard and maybe maybe create a real-time application or analytics application using this particular concept so this is the part where you can have your any kind of business logic send it to the database make some real-time prediction what would be the next second steps prediction what or make some anomaly detection application or anything this opens up a new paradigm in our Django learning that is for sure I hope you like this video if you like my contents please consider subscribing to my channel please like this video as well and also suggest me on comments if you want any specific kind of a project or you come across with any kind of project with some real time kind of a hopefully i will see you next time and i would be glad to listen from you in the comment section or you can reach out to me as well thanks for your time and have a great day stay safe